Hi, and welcome to Kitchen Corner on Today with Paul. Uh, unfortunately, before we begin uh, today's episode, um, there's a little matter I have to take care to. Um, just so happens, funny as it were, uh, one of my co-workers at the restaurant I work at, well, it turns out apparently this show is too entertaining and during the holiday season, her cookies burned while she was watching the show. So, with that being said, and I said funny as it were, well, today with Paul, legal team didn't quite uh, feel the same. So, uh, no, 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 don't worry, Bobby. I'm gonna take care of it. Oh, well, okay, well, Bobby's right. It seems he used some helpful hands to give me this nice little warning. Thanks, helpful hands, I, I guess. Uh, we gotta do what we gotta do, right? So here we go. Uh, here's the official legal team warning. Okay, so here we go. Warning, while watching Today with Paul, please avoid operating heavy machinery. Well, I guess uh, don't watch it while you're in the Caterpillar at work doing construction or maybe even drive your car, I don't know. Uh, avoid cooking and or baking in the kitchen, babysitting children, signing any legally binding documents, and of course, avoid online purchasing. So while you're uh, checking this show out, be sure to avoid all those types of things. It's going to be so entertaining that somehow something's going to slip past you and uh, we don't want anything bad to happen. So back to the show today. Today on Kitchen Corner or on Today with Paul, today we're going to make cheese sauce. And what I want to do is show you a nice shot of the recipe here. I'm going to hold it right there. This is the exact recipe we're going to use. This is a quarter version of the one I use at work. I'm gonna hold it here. You can even pause the screen if you like. And there you go. So as you can see, we've got very few um, simple ingredients here we're gonna be using. And uh, of course, as you know, I like to do on Today with Paul, we're gonna mise and pause it. So we got everything we need over here to start with and even including on the stove. So first thing I really wanna do is I'm gonna talk to you about the whole boiler setup. So double boiler setup, what, what's that? Well, we got a, a big pot here and we're gonna put water in it and we're gonna bring it to a boil. A uh, smaller pot here, it's gonna fit right in there. And what's gonna happen is you've got indirect heating from water, not straight from the uh, actual, oh, uh, the actual burner on the stove. And that's gonna keep you from uh, burning. Very useful uh, in a lot of projects, especially today since we've been using a, uh, well, dairy product scorches fairly quick. Uh, so we're doing that today. First thing I'm gonna do then is uh, let's go ahead and get some water filled up. We're gonna figure it out about how much we need so it's not too much for the inner part here and uh, it doesn't go floating away on us. So let's get started with that. Now, like I said, you might do a tapioca pudding with this type of setup. You do some of your um, milk gravies with this. Today we're doing cheese sauce. I'm thinking that could be about right. Be sure to test your pans out. Yeah, that's about perfect if uh, maybe even a little too much. I'm gonna go ahead and set this on the stove. I'm gonna put it on medium for now because uh, know your tools out there too. Know your equipment. On this stove top, uh, medium can get you there pretty quick. So that's what we're starting with today. So the ingredients we're gonna need. First things first we're gonna need is uh, beer. Uh, of all things, so we're already starting this project off with a um, with a, something fun or, or just a little bit of pizzazz. I don't know how often any of you kick the beer, but here's a nice little weight scale. We're gonna have to measure it out just like that. Uh, you're gonna see here you got an on button. It's gonna come on there, and when you put your pressure down on it, nah, it doesn't want to play so much on me here. No, okay, well. Either way, the big thing is, is once we get our, uh, our uh, container on here to uh, measure our beer with, we're going to hit this uh, button again over here and it's going to zero it out. We don't want the weight of the bowl, we just want the weight of the beer. So that's where we're going with. And just so it happens, I'm going to be using the bowl that we're using for the double boil. So here we go. Let's go ahead and set that on there and we'll zero it out. Now we're at a one pound, 0.4 ounce. Just tap the button, 
There we go, we're at zero. Now today's recipe, for any of you who didn't pause it, I'll just keep saying what we're doing as we go. We actually want since six ounces of beer in this project. So we're gonna go ahead. Uh, also, mind you, the skunkier the beer, the better. And so my personal recommendation is stag beer. Uh, it's pretty skunky and usually a lot of times, for whatever reason, that's the case. That really helps the flavor profile quite well. So what we're gonna do is get our six ounces here. I bought a 24 ounce can because I really don't feel like a six pack of uh, stag beer is well, like I say, skunky as it is, it's not my favorite beer out there. So I don't really need a whole lot except for cooking. That's actually about all we need right there. In fact, I'm just a little bit over at 0.9. Um, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, what do I got here? No, I gotta go a little bit further. Sorry about that, guys. I don't use the scale for this sort of thing too often, so uh, I'm not used to the micro measure. Let's say that, let's just say micro measure. Okay, I'm at 6.2 ounces there, not so bad, okay. Off to a little bit of a weird start with my scale and all that, but it's not too often I uh, actually end up needing it. Um, but it's very useful when you do. So there we go, we got our beer. And uh, go ahead and give you a shot of that. Yeah, there you go. And you can smell it right off the bat, it's pretty skunky beer. We're gonna go ahead and get it on the stove here. And uh, you can put it up fairly high because what we're wanting to do here, and here's another term for you for, uh, seems like we learned a lot of uh, words here on Today with Paul. Not such a bad thing at the end of the day. We're going to reduce the beer. And so through the process of cooking, we're actually cooking out the alcohol. And we're also kind of uh, changing that flavor profile. And it's really gonna kind of, um, be a beautiful uh, back note in the cheese sauce. So we're getting that going. Yeah, I got a feeling I might need to crank this bad boy up a little bit over here so we got all that going. Uh, now my special lady friend tells me, she says, you know, your handles stick off the stove. Um, that's not very safe. Somebody can walk by and knock it off. Now, she's absolutely right. So uh, please excuse this right over here, but this is the actual wrong way to do it. Now, uh, right way to do it be like that. Um, but on here on Today with Paul, what I'm actually gonna do is flip it this way, because that's gonna be easier for whisking once I get to that. Okay, so we got the beer. Well, you know, my other motto is, waste not, want not, please reduce, reuse, all of that. But we're not gonna let this go to waste, unfortunately. Uh, there's about only one way to deal with that today, as I ain't got no other recipe for it. So. You know, hey, cook deserves a little bit too. A little beer, a little cerveza for the recipe, a little cerveza for the cook, you know, and that's the way it goes. Uh, um, like a famous uh, chef said out there, good old uh, Julia, uh, <laughs> of course she was in the wine. And so uh, we're gonna take her advice today, have us a nice frosty beverage. Pretty good. I'm gonna say not my favorite, but not bad. Okay. So we're done with the scale. Well, power down first off. We're done with our scale right now. And there we go, we're all powered off right now. So, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and work on some Velveeta cheese. Now that's the next thing we need today. And um, what we're really talking about here is, this is some good old standard Velveeta, you know? I don't, I don't do cheesy stuff too much. And so, I was rather surprised by, well, sticker shocked rather, by uh, $7.99 for two pounds. At the restaurant I work at, we side-by-side uh, -side comparison, breaking down this recipe to a quarter of what I use at the restaurant I'm at. Uh, I was really shocked to see that our blocks of cheese at work are five pounds. These are only two on the consumer shelf. So we've actually got two blocks here, but we're only gonna use a portion of the other. So, uh, of course, first things first, let's go ahead and break these puppies out. And here we got a nice little brown boil over there just about. Yeah, these also come in foil. Now the ones that work, they come in plastic. Of course, they're more of a generic, you know, they're not this actual Velveeta over there at work. So there are handy trash can over here. We're just gonna pop things down. You know how we do. Now uh, come on. Well, this one's being a little bit trouble. We're gonna head and kind of break it out like that. There you go. Now, now, here's the trick. So these blocks are two pounds each. So what are we gonna do exactly? Um, 
Are we gonna break out the weight scale again? No, we're not doing that. We're not gonna do that at all. We're gonna turn this down a bit. It's starting to get a little bit uh, too boiling on us. You don't want it to go all over the stove top over here. You can see where we got plenty of uh, steam buildup at this point. So just, you know, like I said, within reason we want it to be rolling the whole time. And it's not gonna hurt nothing. You know, the beer's not gonna burn or nothing. You might see a little bit of uh, circles around the edge and where the, the bubble level, if you will. So, back to the cheese. So, we need two and a half pounds of this cheese. We got two right here, we just need a half. So here's a little trick and tip for you. And, and, and actually, mind you, this has actually got markings on it for ounceage. So you can go by that if you will. But basically what we're talking about, we're gonna pretty much score down the middle here, just a small press of an indentation. Now I'm gonna show you, you see that right there? Yeah, you can see the little light reflecting off that down the middle. I didn't even pierce the package and, and that's a lucky break for us. Um, that's not always possible. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and score it and a half of that because now this is one pound right here. There's your easy method for doing that. So now I'm gonna get my half a pound off of this. So there we go. We got almost perfectly marked as it was already. There we go. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a little nervous as to whether we're gonna fit all this in that double boil unit, but we're gonna find out. Um, we got two cups of heavy cream to add as well. So we're going to chop all this up, plus them two cups of heavy cream. It's quite a bit of stuff in there. We'll go ahead and open this up. Okay, it's breaking open fairly easy. This is nice. Now, like I say, we mise in closet, right? And that's what we do here on today. The fall is what you should do to make things easy on yourself in your kitchen. Uh, so what do we got? We got us a nice clear plastic bowl here for our cheese so we can get it all ready beforehand. And uh, you know what, we'll go ahead and deal with that when I got to. I like to cut it up into nice thick blocks like that and then cube it when it comes, uh, when I'm done with that part. I find the cubes, they melt down fairly well uh, in this whole mixture. A little bit, you add just a few at a time makes it rather easy to deal with. And I'm thinking we're probably gonna be just about perfect with that double boil setup. And, and I appreciate you all for uh, for really uh, kind of going with the flow with me, if you will. This is my first time making this at home, so uh, a little adventure I got going on here. So we're going to go ahead and peel our other Velveeta here see what I got. Come on. There you go. Okay. Now, I don't know what we're going to use that other Velveeta for, but my special lady friend, she happens to like cheese. And you know we're not going to waste nothing on this show, so... Yeah, we'll find something for it. And there you go. Now, I'm thinking the draw on this is probably just going to be cut it in fours. At work, I usually do about nines on the block. So you can see quite a difference, or I can see rather, quite a difference in the size of the block you're going to get for consumer use. And that's a pretty interesting uh, for me personally. There we go. We're doing that. Now you may ask yourself, well, what's this cheese sauce good for? Okay, well, you know, no, the truth is this, this is a good general cheese sauce for just about anything and everything. Uh, one thought is nachos. How about some nice cheesy nachos? You could even do it up like you're, get creative and expand the process out a bit and do it up with some uh, nachos grande, do some taco meat on the side. Uh, get some nice salsa of your choice or taco sauce, whichever you prefer. And then on top of it, uh, you could also uh, dip Fritos. My lady friend said, hey, why do you want to go get Tostito scoops? She says, Fritos are much better with cheese sauce. So, okay, now I could do that. That would be nice. I think we'll give that a shot. So that's what we got here today. We're going to do a little taste test on that. I happen to like Fritos personally, and if I'm not mistaken, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to check this out, because I do deal with gluten diets, gluten-free diets, that is, at work, and you know, it's the biggest thing, the biggest up-and-coming thing is the gluten-free diet. You may notice things you've been buying for years now say gluten-free. It's the biggest, coolest thing on the market, because lots of people are starting to realize that they feel better, 
when they eat that way. And I've seen the documentary on the Netflix the other day. Uh, some of you might uh, benefit from checking it out even. I don't know. Uh, we each going to do what's going to work out best for us. And, and I can always say that here. Let's uh, go ahead and follow our doctor recommendations. Let's follow uh, what our body tells us. Because we're all not all built the same. And I've said before, let's not act like it. So, uh, another use for this cheese sauce is go ahead and use it for anything you normally do cheese sauces for. There's macaroni and cheese. This would be a delicious cheese sauce for that. You might even do some chili cheese fries. So there you got three things going out once. You got uh, chili. You're going to make some homemade chili. Make this cheese sauce. And uh, get some fries uh, in the fryer. Uh, unless, like I said, unless that's not uh, a health smart choice for you. Maybe you got to bake yours. So moving right along here. We got our cheese cubes. It's not a big deal. Not that this is safety sanitation at this point, but... I don't know about you, but I feel better with clean hands, even if they're not uh, cross-contaminating anything. So there you go. Got all cleaned up. Feel just a little bit better. So we got our pot of water boiling. We got our beer. We got this uh, whole beautiful mess over here. Now, what we might as well do is address the main, uh, I don't know, I guess kind of this, this, this uh, heavy cream is going to kind of be the main base of what this is all about. Everything, without this, not, nothing really works together per se. So uh, as per recipe, as I showed at the beginning of the video, we're gonna need two cups of this. Now personally, you all do what you want. Um, let me go ahead and set that down. I'm gonna show you what uh, a professional measuring cup from an actual uh, restaurant. Uh, after working with this type of stuff all the time, this is made by a company called Cambro, mind you. Um, it's meant for professional settings and professional people and, and after working in that type of environment I just can't deal with the real cheap knockoff stuff at the box store for certain things. Uh, not to say they're, they're not good uh, for certain things. You all might remember that Taylor Digital Thermometer uh, shameless product placement I did. Still love the uh, Taylor Digital Thermometer. In fact, I happen to have one right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you. This this is that one out of the package. I finally broke this bad boy out. So you know the cover goes on there, you know. But one feature I did forget to show you all that day is look, we got little tabs on the back here. I can extend the handle. Look at that, that's pretty neat. We don't really need this today because we're just melting this. We don't have a uh, temperature end goal with this cheese sauce except for how hot that we want it. So that's what we're going for. Whatever your purpose is, we just want to make sure everything's melted together. So off of that sort of thing, let's get back to the heavy cream. Now, one thing I love about heavy cream is that it lasts for a really long time. And also, uh, depending on your fat co content, uh, and, and, and it does come in a couple different contents, if you will, um, it'll last a really long time and it, and it won't really burn so much on you uh, compared to say a 2% milk and especially a skim milk. So the higher the fat content, the less you're going to burn. So we're going to go ahead and measure out two cups of this. Now that's exactly half a quart because this is coming in a quart. Uh, for all of you who don't know, four cups comes in a quart. But I still want to measure it because I want to be about as spot on as possible. So here we go, we're going to measure that out. Nice, all right, we got it. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and set this to the side as well. Go ahead and get us some table decoration here. Here's those Fritos I'm talking about. We're gonna go ahead and set that up like that. Next two ingredients we got here is we've also got the Worcestershire sauce, all right? I keep saying how many people can say that properly. Well, we don't even know if I said it right. Maybe some of you could let me know in the comments down below. Uh, be always interested to read what you think uh, or uh, information you have to share with me. And I'm always learning, uh, just like uh, uh, hopefully all of you are. So we got our Worcestershire, and we've also got uh, some chicken base. Now this is going to be just a little bit, but it's going to add just a, a little that a little bit more edge of flavor you need. Now you can go to uh, what they have like a 
GFS Marketplace in my area. It's a large food distributor that has the professional grade stuff like that measure cup we're talking about. And they also have large jars of uh, base, beef base, chicken base, uh, just about any kind of vegetable base. Those are kind of standard fare. But you can actually find this on the box store shelf found it at a local Myers. Now it's half the amount you're gonna get at the other place. Um, but also, not much cheaper, mind you. But I've been told this better than bouillon is what it's called. And we're gonna find out today whether it's better than bouillon. I hear it's amazing. And they got this nice quality jar with the seal around there, you know, the seal approval. You know that nobody's been in this jar uh, with that seal like that. And that's nice. Now, let's go ahead and get some pot holders here. This, this, this little double boiler back here does have some silicone grips on the side, but I'm still not taking the chance because it's burned once uh, and not to be burned twice. Yeah, it's not fun, is it, guys? And to tell the truth, now, this beer is going to get a little bit darker on you, but you can really, you, know, you can't really see it so much. I know, I'm not going to spill nothing on camera here, so I'm not, I'm not looking to clean up another mess. Now we're going to go ahead and get out our pot there. Safety first with the burners, turn that bad boy off. Now we're going to add our heavy cream. Perfect. Now, I'm not being exact here because to tell the truth, I'm wondering how much of this cheese we're actually going to get in there. Um, and then, sure, or, uh, how much of this was uh, going to be uh, size appropriate. So we're going to find out. This is my first time. Thank you for going along the journey with me. Uh, we'll do that. Set this up uh, to the side over there. Now is here is where we can go ahead and add our other two ingredients. And so, uh, as was stated in the beginning, we got a half teaspoon of the Worcestershire going in there. And um, now, now, like I've said before, we can do a capful. But the cap full at work is a lot larger than this cap full at home. And just for anybody's general knowledge, one of those large like gallon bottles of this stuff, the cap full equals two teaspoons, which is one teaspoon short of a, ta a tablespoon. So we're gonna go ahead and measure that now. We got our half a teaspoon of the Worcestershire going in here. And you just get it right over there, get a little extra, not a big deal. There you go. You know, I had to start putting these dirty things to the side over here. And now we're going to get our better than bouillon, put that in there, and then give it a good little stir. I said, you don't have to be too exact with this stuff. And look how, how, look how nice and gooey this stuff is. It's really moving around. In fact, what I'll do is, I got my teaspoon right there, my little quarter teaspoon. How about that? I'm just going to put it in here and give it a nice little stir. It's so gooey because it's, it's not refrigeration until after opening. Well, we just cracked this bottle open, so we're going to do that here in a while, too. There we go. Give it a little stir. You can already kind of see your heavy cream starting to get a little bit of uh, heat to it. That's exactly what you want. Try to get as much of this out. Now, the hotter the liquid, the easier for this chicken base to come out. Chicken base likes heat, major heat. And, and on a side note, for any of you who've never really worked with uh, the bases, uh, the bases are great. You can make yourself, don't, you don't have to go buy that pre-made chicken broth when you're gonna make chicken noodle soup for your sick kid that night. You can buy some of this stuff, and if you think it tastes better, and just get yourself some boiling water. It's not a big deal. All right, there we go. We pretty much got this thing all cleared out, so we're done with that now. Now it comes down to just giving this bad boy a stir every once in a while. It's a fairly stable platform, too. We're gonna go start putting some cheese in there. And that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I'm not so sure how well this is gonna work. We might be transferring into a different setup here. Yeah, I'm not so sure, but hey. You never know. So that, 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 that's another little tip to be mindful of. Make sure you got your setup uh, in such a way that you're set up for success. If uh, you need to transfer to other dishes halfway through, you've done a couple things to yourself. First off, you made the process of cooking this particular project a little bit more uh, work. And then also on the back end, you went ahead and added more dishes to do 
for later on. And, and how many of us like doing dishes every day? Not too many of us. So now you just made more work for yourself all around. So we're gonna see what happens here. I might even scrounge around and see uh, what the next setup would be. So I'm gonna go digging around for a minute while this is doing that. Take another little sip. You gotta have to be a happy cook. Tasty, very tasty. Of course, but being that it's a Sunday, usually that's football day. Um, you know, hey, this would be work out great. This will work out real great for your little get together. I'm sure all your friends would be very well impressed and happy to see this. Once you take a taste of this cheese sauce, you know what it's good for. And, and, and that reminds me, we're not done with the little list yet. Okay, so you got chili cheese fries, the last thing I mentioned. Well, for any of you not familiar with a certain area called Central Illinois, we have something called a horseshoe. Well, let me, what is a horseshoe? Well, let me go ahead and describe that to you here in a minute. Wow, we keep adding some cheese cubes. So anyways, the horseshoe is basically like this. Who wants to eat something called a horseshoe? That sounds fairly strange when you think about it. Well, basically what we're talking about, we're talking about bread on the bottom, your choice of meat, but typically hamburger, and then a bunch of french fries on top, and then cheese sauce like this, drizzled, not drizzled, but I mean just poured over the whole thing. And so you got yourself a nice tasting mess on a plate. All right, guys, here's what I figured out. This rig is just a little bit too small. So I'm gonna go ahead and need to switch up to something larger here. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and get this pot boiling. And we're gonna switch into that. It's just the way it goes, but hey, like I say, be prepared for the unexpected. You never know what to expect. Just be uh, ready to uh, move with what's coming your way. That's all you can do at the end of the day. And, and that's some good advice for life in general anyways, I do believe. There's really not much you can do otherwise. You just gotta go with the flow. Life doesn't always turn out how you thought it would. So we're gonna get that rolling. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead, safety first, take that bad boy off. And we're gonna dump this water in here. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to use that pot right there to finish this off. That little double boiler is perfect for some things, but in this case, it's not perfect for this. So that's the way that goes. So we're going to go ahead and do that. There we go. Oh, yeah, look at all that lovely goo there. Oh, it's a darn shame it couldn't work out like that, but now we're, now we're in motion. Now we definitely need, definitely need our pot holders. And I'm sorry, this process takes quite a while. Don't mean to, uh, don't want to make a video last too long on you guys. We don't want feature length. <laughs> there we go. We're moving. We're working. It'd be working. And you know what? We're going to dump just a little bit of water out because... What we got going on here is just a little too much. Now that's the silicone cutting board. That works out pretty nice some of the time. Love that. And well even bonus, there you go. We're gonna pour some of that hot water in our other cheese bowl so we don't have too much of a mess later. That'll rinse out real nice. All right, so here we go. At this point, I'm basically just gonna add the rest of the cheese. And that's what we're gonna do. Mm-mm-mm. Not the ideal double boiler, but you can't always get what you want. There we go. All right, guys. Now, another beautiful thing, other than the horseshoes. The other beautiful thing is why not your veggies? Dress up your veggies a little bit. Cauliflower, broccoli, it's all good stuff. I understand it's all good on its own, but isn't it even just a little bit better when you got to a little something for extra flavor and uh, let us not forget to keep talking about the diets out there one other good thing that this is for how about just raising your cholesterol 
<laughs> Let's face it, if there's anything this sort of thing is good for you, you got the Velveeta, you got extra uh, fat content in a dairy product, and you're also throwing some concentrated uh, salty um, chicken flavor at it. So <laughs> if there's anything that this could really definitely be guaranteed to do, it's probably raised that cholesterol a little bit. You're gonna take another taste of this somewhat tasty beverage. There you go. Yeah, some hot water here. Well, this ain't work, working so bad. This ain't working so bad. I think we got it, guys. And this will be melted pretty soon. This Velveeta likes to get real melty real fast. So this ain't gonna take much longer. Now, mind you, mind you, this also, believe it or not, keeps very well in the fridge. This stays in a very, uh, a fairly liquid uh, sort of uh, state, if you will, and uh, is easily reheatable. It's not gonna cause any issues for that. So, you know, before the big day, go ahead and make this up ahead of time. You could even put it in the crock pot at wherever you're going. It's gonna be perfect. Now, I also had another thought. I was talking about chili cheese fries earlier as being one of those options you can go with. Um, you know, why not even throw a little bit in the chili itself? Oh, that could be pretty good. So it might even make more of a tastier dip. Maybe throw some of the chili in this. Either way it goes, it, you got something tasty. Now grab your favorite chip. Um, not everybody likes the corn chips, but uh, and check your corn chips. You know, because like I said earlier, gluten. You need to look at that label back there. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look right now and see, but I'm pretty sure. Well, what do you got in here? Ingredients for Fritos chips. Corn, corn oil, and salt gluten-free guys so for any of you out there who think oh i can't have anything good i'm gluten-free you got yourself some nice tasty uh cheese sauce here uh with some gluten-free chips mm, 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 mm. And you start to see that color come out it's really starting to turn yellow now and you got that goo factor going on very nice very 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 nice and you're going to keep whisking like I said, we're not too worried. You don't see me stirring too much or being too concerned about the stir because at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is the double boiler method makes it very easy to not stick, not burn, all that. So it's not even an issue. But what is an issue is this water that <laughs> ain't quite at a boil yet. It's kind of hoping we'd be getting this cheese sauce down the road a little bit further for y'all. But that's okay. That's okay. Like the motto of the show says, because you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> uh, we're getting there, though. It'll be working. It's working. I'm turning that up a little bit. And I don't want to boil to the point where I'm kicking it outside the double boiler setup either. That's not safe. No, but I think we're just about there, guys. Yeah, this thing has come together nicely. There's a little clump there. But once you start getting to the point, that there is uh, nothing else coming up with the whisk. Look at that. Oh yeah, okay. Well, like I said before, pack your bags. <laughs> We're going home on this project. Yeah, that's perfect. Yes, yes, yes. And just like that, you got yourself some nice cheese sauce right there. Look at that golden deliciousness. We'll go ahead and crack up uh, these chips over here. There we go. Hey, what do you know? No fuss, no muck. Go ahead and give this a nice taste. Yeah, look at that. Look at how that cheese sauce just kind of drips down and it'll slow up. And then what do we got? Oh, yeah. That's real good right there. So from Paul's uh, kitchen on Today with Paul to your kitchen at home, I want to thank you for sharing and liking and subscribing. And I also hope you have a wonderful day. Happy cooking, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.